Welcome to part four in this series of videos where we look at Blazor WebAssembly from a beginner's perspective. So far, we have hard coded data for countries and cities in their respective controllers. In this video, we'll look at adding a database to record this data. The database I've chosen is SQLite, and to link SQLite uh, with our C Sharp, I'm using Dapper. Why have I chosen SQLite? My reasons for doing this is that it is easy to install and use, it's a single file and doesn't require a server, and is open source and doesn't require a license. However, one disadvantage is that SQLite doesn't support stored procedures, unlike Microsoft SQL Server, for example, but I don't think this will present us with any kind of problem. What is Dapper and why use it? If you look up the definition of what Dapper is, you'll get something like this. Dapper is an open source object relational mapping, ORM, library for .NET and .NET Core applications. I'm not really sure what that means, but as far as I'm concerned, it simply means that I don't have to use Entity Framework, and it's relatively simple to use, and we can use SQL statements directly within C Sharp. So the tasks that we've got to undertake are to download and install a what's called DB Browser for SQLite. This is uh, very similar to, for example, Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. This allows us to work from a database first point of view. In Visual Studio, we need to add a folder to the server project to house the single file that SQLite is going to create. Then we're going to use DB Browser to add the database, add the country table, add the city table, and add a little bit of test data. And in Visual Studio, we'll need to add the database to the server project and then to find a connection string to add to appsettings.json. This will then link everything through from SQLite to our C Sharp project. We'll then need to make some changes uh, to our C Sharp code to accommodate this. So let's make a start and we'll download SQLite browser and install it. To do this, we need to go to https colon slash slash sqlitebrowser.org. With sqlitebrowser.org open in your browser, select download. And in my case, I'm using Windows 64. So I'm going to select DB browser for SQLite standard installer for 64-bit Windows. If you're using one of the other uh, forms of uh, Windows or even Mac OS, select the correct version that you're using. Click it and download it. Once it's downloaded, select Open. And go through the wizard to install it. There's nothing very complicated here. Uh, but I would suggest that you either click desktop or program menu for a shortcut. You don't need to worry about DB Browser SQL Cipher. Click Next. Install it in the default place. Click Next and Install. Then click Finish to complete that part of the job. The next task is to go to our project in Visual Studio. I've got it already open and within the server project here we need to create a, a folder uh, called data. So right click, add, new folder and we'll call it data. The next thing to do is to, again, right click the new folder and select copy full path. This is going to put it into the clipboard and we're going to be using it shortly uh, once we've opened the DB browser. 
So I've now copied that. And in fact, what I think I'll do is add that into Notepad as well. Now we need to open DB Browser. Um, DB Browser is in quite small font, so I'm going to change my screen resolution. I'll do that and then I'll have DB Browser open. I've opened DB Browser and maximised it, so hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. The first thing we need to do is to add the Countries and Cities database. So to do this we click New Database and in here we put in that post in that path that we selected earlier to go there and we're going to add the database and we're going to call it Countries and Cities. And save it. It now prompts us to put in our first table. The first table we want is called country and I'm doing this in the singular and now we need to add some fields. The fields we want for country are quite simple. We want country ID and it's going to be an integer. Let's see if I can make this a little bit wider. We don't want it to be null, so not null. The ID is going to be the primary key. We want to auto increment and we want it to be unique. We now need to add another uh, field or column called country name. This time is going to be text. And we aren't going to allow nulls. So we'll click OK to save that. Now we need to add the table for the cities. So we click Create Table again. City. And I'll go through this quite quickly. So, so for the city, we want a city ID, city name, city population and country ID. And with those uh, properties. Once we've added the tables we can now enter some test data. So select country and then click browse data and this brings up the a, a little grid with the uh, table definitions in it and what we need to do is click this little button here underneath browse data that says insert a new record in the current table. So select that and we're now given the opportunity of putting a country name in there. So I'm going to select Australia and I'm selecting some here that are different from the ones we originally had. And if we select it again And I'm going to put in France. So that's got our test data in there. I'm not going to bother entering any data for cities. Once that's all done, we need to save the data. So I'm going to select right changes and that should be it for all we need to do there. So I'm now going to close DB Browser and change my screen definition back to what it was before. In Visual Studio, we can now close this file, we don't need that. And if I choose refresh here, or just open the data folder, we should see countries and cities DB in there. If countries and cities doesn't appear here, and it should, uh, right click on the data folder, select add, and then select existing item. And then you'll need to browse to the location for the, the data folder. 
it should default to that anyway. And you should be able to select countries and cities and then click add. Uh, mine's there already, so I don't need to. Before we leave countries and cities in Solution Explorer, we can set two properties of the database so that when we publish the application, the database is included with the package. Right click on countries and cities and select properties. In build action, we want to select content. And on copy to output directory, we want to select copy if newer. That way, uh, when we publish it, the application, for example, to Microsoft Office Azure, um, if the file that we've got on our development system is newer than the one on the where it's published, then the, the newer version will be will be copied over. That probably isn't what what we require once it's actually in in develop. Uh, sorry, in the production, uh, so we can change this to perhaps never. Close that. We don't need that any longer. And the next thing is to define a connection string. This is to link the application to the database. And to do that, we need to open app settings on the server, on the server project, and it is down here. So, and then we need to add this at the end. So I'm going to just copy some, sorry, paste some uh, code in here. So we want to copy our, a comma after allowed hosts, and then we want, this this here. So it's connection strings. I'm calling it default and this is the data source. So it's the data folder, then countries and cities.db and then version three. This is to do with the current version of SQL SQLite. And just as an aside, notice that countries and cities, I've got all lowercase down here whereas I've actually called it countries and cities with uppercase for countries and, and cities. It doesn't matter. I was just being lazy here. So save that. And then the next stage is to install Dapper. So I'll close that. And I'm going to go to Tools New Get Package Manager, Manage New Get Packages for Solution. And I'm going to go to Browse and I'm going to enter Dapper. There, there are two New Get Packages we need. Dapper is the first. And I had to scroll up. It's this top one, Dapper by Sam Saffron. Don't get uh, distracted by some of the other ones we've got down here. So as you can see, 200 million downloads. That's pretty impressive. So select the server because that's where we want it and click install. It's installed, so that's fine. And the next thing we need in here is another one, system.data.sqlite. core system.data.sqlite.core that's the one we need and we need to install that so little tick there so that's been installed correctly so that's it for the setup the setup is actually not difficult um, if you take all the things step by step All we've done at this stage, the only thing we're doing is changing the data source from a list of data declared in the country controller to reading the data from the SQLite database. We therefore don't need to make any changes to the country's list page raiser or country service or iCountry service. The only file that needs modifying is the controller, country controller. So let's open that. And we need to make a few changes in here. 
at the top of the file we need to add some using statements so using dapper using system.data and using system.data.sqlite we no longer need this static data so we can get rid of that so just highlight it and delete it but we will replace it with this it's a private read-only i configuration which we're calling underscore config and then this this which i think is called a constructor uh, which is just setting underscore config to config and we'll be using this to get the connection string from uh, app settings .data. next we need to declare a couple of variables the we're declaring a public string called connection id and we're setting that to default if you recall in app settings we set the connection string to default uh, if we call that something else in app settings we'd need to reflect that here we're going to be writing our sql commands directly in our c-sharp code uh, so i'm declaring a public string called sql command and i'm just setting it to an empty string and then we're going to need an i enumerable of type country called countries so we'll be when when we modify our get countries in here we'll be populating this i enumerable the next stage is down here we need to replace this with this so get countries we're modifying that so the sql command is select asterisk from country that will literally that's a sql statement saying select everything from the country table then we're using this idb connection uh, which is part of uh, system.data maybe even part of system.data.sqlite to create a connection which we're calling con and it's a new sqlite connection and we're getting the connection string from connection id and this is the bit that does the magic we're saying countries equals await connection dot query async country sql command and then that just returns ok and the countries notice we haven't done anything about the uh, single country idea id down here for the moment so let's see if that works the application runs and if we look at country list we get our two new countries Australia and France so to summarize we've replaced our hard-coded data for countries with a SQLite database and connected it through to our C sharp code and used dapper and the C-sharp code to retrieve the country list. We can use the same technique for most of the interactions between uh, our programs and the SQLite database. And now, uh, before the video finishes, I'll add a screen which shows the definitions of the database definitions for country and city. And I'll also put a screen on with some links to some useful uh, internet resources. Thank you very much for watching and the next video should be coming along shortly. Thank you very much.